light to issues like my um, monitor. So to get started, uh, Alicia and Peter will probably not share that mic. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you first, uh, if you get a letter from you know how you got involved with the project. Oh, okay. Uh, what happened is an issue to me because I got an email and they said, hey, um, we have this project, uh, it's, it's around um, the money bill system and you know, you're looking for a little more artist. And of course, I want to know more about the details. And um, I've heard of great results before, so that attracted me. And I did more research on y'all to know more. And, uh, and it, it took just a moment to think about it because I don't jump right into anything, but um, it is a topic that I hold dear to my heart. So that was the main reason I just said yes. But I never asked how they felt me. I just it was like, that's what's up. Right. So, so, right. Um, so uh, what, what was it about bail that kind of drew you in? What, what is it about the bail system that kind of is a, is a passion for you? Well, I think it's terrible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, the community I grew up in, like many people in impoverished communities, I grew up in Camden, New Jersey, and I see injustices happen all the time. Uh, uh, a lot of people I grew up with right now, you know, dealt with my siblings and stuff who get incarcerated for just ridiculous things. Um, my brother was a person who got incarcerated for something he was uh, innocent, uh, you know, and then it, they make money off of so I know how uh, the system profits off of um, specifically black and brown people. And um, also I, I work with youth involved in the juvenile justice system. I just, I recently worked for an organization where we worked with all youth. Um, around Los Angeles and about the juvenile justice system and they're in and out of court all the time for silly things like, I don't know, we, we, we found you, it's just like marijuana and stuff which is like just stupid or really dumb things like, oh, you were supposed to be at school five minutes ago and you're late. <laughs> That's a, you know, violation or it gets dumber than that, but you yeah. know. Yeah, the, there's a line that really sticks out to me in the film uh, when you talk about the, the bail industries concern for cash over our lives. And it's really this dehumanizing thing that I think uh, really comes to light in this piece and uh, gets really heightened more you learn about the bail system. Um, Monica, I wanted to ask you, um, I'm not sure how many people know here, how many people watching online might know, but what is the difference between bail and money bail? Just that, that we, we do make a distinction in a lot of our films between you know, bail and money bail. So, uh, real quick, uh, in, in the room, if you can raise your hand, do you think there's a difference between bail and money bail? If you do, please raise your hand. This is a leading question a little bit, but yeah, so, there aren't too many hands raised, so if you can, can clarify that first. Yeah, so the whole system originally was set up so that people um, would guaranteed they are going back to court. So if they were arrested, um, they would be let out on whatever bail is. If most of the times it is let bail, there are unsecured bonds, there are all kinds of things. There's, you can put up a guarantee to say, I'll be back for my trial day. So it doesn't have to be a money bail system, which is how our system operates. And we are um, in the United States, I think the United States and the Philippines are the only two countries that, that still have the money bail system, that's the common system. So, yeah, there's, there are other ways to guarantee folks coming back to court. That's, that's so true. As you do more research, and as we've done research, uh, finding more about what's happening nationally, it's kind of amazing how how it's not particularly that effective, like that more effective than, than alternatives. Uh, could you actually speak to some of the alternatives that are being proposed in SB 10? Like, why is SB 10 a better alternative than the bail system that we have right now? Because I know a lot of the argument is that this fear mongering of, you know, we'll just get rid of these people, violent criminals, out into the streets. Could you speak a little bit to that? So, yeah, SB 10. The bill that's going through the California legislature right now um, really changes the system from being money based to having an assessment on, based on the risk uh, of the individual. So it gives more circumstances to the judge when initially seeing that person. 
um, in a bail hearing. Right now, the average bail hearing is about two minutes long. It is not long at all. There is no other evaluation really besides what's called a bail schedule that the judge has. So this will open that up and allow the judge to really um, look at the circumstances surrounding each individual case. And so when we talk about um, whatever the charge is, but normally even if it's, for example, we just had an incident in San Diego a couple of days ago. I know these happen on the clock, but we have to go about this one, where a 66-year-old man was walking, taking his daily walk, had a walking stick, and was arrested for having a leaded cane that couldn't be used as a weapon. Bill said $20,000. Um, the um, organizations and folks put up $2,000 for him to get out. But the point is, no one will ever get that money back. His life is, has been interrupted and will continue to be interrupted. And with a risk-based uh, system in place, then a judge can easily look at those circumstances and say, this is ridiculous. So that's what changed. And 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 it's a shift of focus completely away from trying to find ways to keep people in prison and really trying to get them the tools to come back to court, which is the whole purpose of bail in the first place. Yes. Um, Alicia, when, when you hear about that sort of story, the, those sort of injustices that are going on, how does that inspire your work, or how does that motivate the work that you do as a, as a poet and artist? Well, it's strange, because it keeps me going, but I wish it wasn't stories like that that kept me going. Like, uh, I know uh, injustices happen all the time, especially with our court, our legal system, and everything. And um, it's a big reason why I write and uh, why I, I do the work I did. I'm committed to it, but it's just sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I wish um, I could just write about flowers and butterflies. Same thing in the world. Our motivation, unfortunately, comes from very unfortunate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So. You've kind of used your voice as a poet to to uh, speak on behalf of those who might not have a voice um, through this piece and, and through the work that you do, not just on film, but uh, as a spoken word artist. Um, for the poets in the room and, and the artists who might be watching online, um, what words of encouragement or advice can you give uh, to, to use your voice, to use your creative voice to, to get involved in in social movement to, to use your voice on behalf of social justice? Um, uh, what advice? I have so much advice on that. I'm trying to see what I can say in a simple way. Um, make yourself available. Um, don't just wait for, I mean, I know a lot of, I speak to a lot of poets who are like, um, they won't do certain things if there's not a big paycheck at all, or if there's not a big opportunity, but I spend so much time um, Oh, for a long time, like every time I remind myself, how long I'm doing this, I'm like, wow, I don't know. Uh, but I spent a long time doing a lot. I've done a lot of free stuff. I've been in the classrooms that need to be most, um, did it for free because I know it's for a good cause. I've uh, formed and done certain events because I know it's for a good cause. I'll always make myself available when I know it's purposeful, when I know that um, I believe in things coming back to you. And, you know, the, the, the checks eventually came, you know. But, um, you know, it's, I, I sacrifice myself and I know a lot of artists who have to do that and if you believe in something it's really about their life. Um, you know, and it, I, I wasn't always fortunate. These are days when I was really surviving off coffee, you know, for a middle uh, you know, so um, I made myself available for the things I believed in and um, I made myself available in different environments from the classroom to literally the subway station. Um, and like all types of environments to make sure my voice is heard because I I believe in what I say and, um, yeah. Yeah. 
And, and Monica, from my understanding as well, there's no, there's no statewide regulation or rules regarding the bail schedules come up to the counties to determine on their own what those schedules are. The counties determine the schedules. All 58 counties have different schedules. The bill we actually get rid of those schedules. Which, which would be huge. Which would be huge because judges would be forced to look at one of the circumstances. Yes, in the in the room. Do you want to mic it up? No. <laughs>
take the money and the money that is beneath is a person. That's so you infer you get to the health system. Thank you. Thank you.